Steve Spravier, our guest this morning on Daybreak. Steve played on the 73 National Championship game at Alabama. Of course, the National Championship game uh, in Glendale, Arizona on Monday night, Alabama and Clemson. Steve, good morning. And good morning. Thanks for sitting in with us and reminiscing a little bit. Okay. Uh, 1973 is a little bit different then as far as how they uh, awarded national championships. Well, it is. I mean, this, of course, it's continued to evolve as, as uh as you know, uh, the whole process, you know, uh, <clears throat> there used to be a number of, uh, even up, up until just a few years ago, AP national champion uh, coaches poll, UPI, as I still say. Uh, there's some other polls that were, were given. And, uh, but now it's all culminated to one big game, one big game. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, you know, the playoff system uh, so far I think is working, you know, but it's, it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting Monday night. Yeah, uh, actually, you were telling me yesterday, uh, three guys from uh, the Silicon area have played on national championship teams at Alabama. Yeah, right. Unless, I, unless there's somebody I don't know of, uh, myself and Randy Billingsley on 73, and then Richard Brewer uh, in 1965. Mm -hmm. And T.J. Green... Plays at Clemson now. Yes, that, that's a remarkable story. <laughs> T.J. Green is a tremendous talent, uh, a big part of their program from Sylacauga High School. Uh, was not really recruited by Alabama or Auburn. I think somebody, maybe Auburn came in late, but he committed to uh, Clemson, and I'm sure certainly, uh, I'm certainly he believes that he's at the right place, and I think he is. But, uh, but if Clemson wins, that would be four people that have a national championship ring. Uh, you, uh, in 1973, uh, they did the split national championship, Alabama and Notre Dame. You guys played in the old Sugar Bowl in right, New Orleans. Right. Old Sugar Bowl, and uh, we lost a famous game, 24-23. to 23. UPI gave us a, a national championship, and they gave, AP gave the Notre Dame uh, their national championship. So, uh, But... Doesn't apply like that anymore. It's, it comes down to this one game. Yeah, and a big game it is. Uh, do you see some as you co you played for Coach Bryant and you you followed Saban at Alabama and and his huge success? Uh, you see similarities in their coaching. Style. Uh, yeah, I think they pretty much preach the same message. Uh, I think that uh, Saban is much more articulate than uh, Coach Bryant was, but everybody understands what, what, they're, what both of them were talking about and what they're trying to get across. Uh, I read an interesting article yesterday uh, about our strength coach, Cochran, mm -hmm. and Saban. He had, both of those guys are teaching the same things, leading in the same direction. Uh, they just, their, their, their techniques to, to, to get the point across are a little bit different, but mm -hmm. both of them are work together. Uh when Coach Bryant was the head guy at Alabama, recruiting wasn't a problem because of the, of the numbers. I mean, he, he'd get a million guys come over there. It's different now. Uh, when Coach Bryant was recruiting uh, and having the national championship teams, uh, what was so special about him during that time? Well, Coach Bryant was just special uh, uh, the whole time, I guess, and during his coaching career. Uh, uh, he uh, he was uh, uh, he was great at taking players that's called tweeners, which I would fit in that category, uh, the way he liked to describe it, and and developing those players. Mm -hmm. You know, he probably what he used to say, he probably is not as good with the great, truly great athlete as as uh, he would be with the the ones that weren't. And uh, he had a way of just developing players with creating a great oneness on the team. Great singleness of purpose, uh, you know that you, uh, uh, you know you could just the, the, old, the old thing about with one heartbeat, you know that's that's he he could create that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know people talk about uh, you know how did he do it? Well, uh, I don't know that there's a, a one simple answer to that, but uh, uh, he got everybody believing in his plan. Saban calls it the process. Coach Bryant, just Coach Bryant referred to it as his plan. And, and you either followed his plan or, or you weren't going to be a part of it. But he found out how important football was to you, everybody. I don't care if you were John Hanna, who was the greatest offensive lineman in history, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, or me. 
who wasn't the greatest offensive lineman, not as the greatest talent, but he had to find out how much football meant to you. And he found that out uh, <laughs> pretty convincingly. So he, he knew. He knew who his winners were. Do you see the fans' passion from the 70s to here we are, 2016? Is it different? Uh, there's more of them. Uh, there, there's, there, the fan base is enlarged, I think, certainly because of the larger stadiums. But if you talk to fans in the 70s, uh, the wishbone era, I think, ignited something uh, that lasted a little over a decade, or right at a decade. And um, I think those fans during that time were very rabid, were very devoted, uh, just like they are now at a different time. Mm. Uh, you know, it costs a lot more to go to a football game uh, today than it did then, you know. Uh, we talk about the $7 ticket in the 70s compared to the $75 and $100 ticket today. And these, by the way, these the cheapest bowl tickets you can get, face value is $450. So. I won't be making that trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve Sprayberry uh, on the national championship uh, team in 73. Uh, at Alabama, of course, the Tide currently playing for another national title on Monday night. And, uh, you know, Dabo Sweeney, the coach at Clemson, you got to love this guy. Dabo is, is great, and I, I do highly respect <clears throat> Dabo Sweeney, and I think anybody, uh, pretty much everybody does. He's uh, – he, he – Great stories on Dabo from the time he was walked on, got a scholarship, left football games on Saturday afternoons to go back to Pelham to clean gutters. I mean, that kind of stuff, you know, you just can't, you can't invent. You know, I mean, that's real. And uh, he tells great stories about how Saban, I mean, Stalin's gave him his job and, and uh, first job, first opportunity. And he's just been very fortunate and he's done a great job. Great he talked job. about uh, this week uh, uh, about how uh, he was on Dubose's staff, and uh, when Dubose was fired, Franchoni came in, and Franchoni didn't keep All the right. staff. And he said they had just built a new house and uh, a new baby on the way, and he had no job, and and uh, so he went into real estate, was very successful there, and he ended up at Clemson. Uh, but he's one of those guys that you you like to pull for, and I, you know I've heard several people say this, including you and I. If Alabama were to lose somebody, I you know I'd be okay with Clemson instead of I'd Ohio rather be, State. I'd rather Notre be Dame. Clemson than uh, than Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, but I don't want to lose uh, yeah. <laughs> regardless. But uh, you know, good gosh, I tell you, Dabo Sweeney, I don't. I don't think I can say enough good things about. Have you seen a defense like this Alabama squad? They well, they're making them. they're making comparisons, uh, and I read something the other day about it, uh, comparing to maybe maybe they don't have the true. This is this is where it gets kind of crazy when you start evaluating teams in, in specific years. Maybe they don't have the absolute true greatest athletes that they had in two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. But there's something about this defense that's compensating for it. You know, you call it what you want to. But they are a very special group. They may have three uh, that go in the first round of the NFL draft. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you know, that, uh, that, that's part of the difference. You know, now when you talk about 40 years mm -hmm. ago, I mean, there weren't many players that came off, you know, Alabama's team that, that right. went in that NFL draft. And now we have a host of them. And they're, and they're pretty much uh, – you used to be recruited to come to Alabama to play for a national championship, you know, to play for championships. And now one of the selling points is coming there is, is getting to the, quote, next level. You know, that's a term I'd never heard until relatively uh, recently, mm -hmm. you know, the next level. You know, nobody, nobody including John Hanna, was talking about going to the next level. Uh, he was talking about – winning a championship. You know, that's what we talked about. Coker uh, played well against Michigan State. Of course, Henry, the Heisman Trophy winner, didn't carry the ball, I think, about 20 times uh, against Michigan State. And so Michigan State loading up the blocks uh, to uh, the box to stop the run. Uh, you know, Coker will have his hands full against a, a good Clemson defense, too. Yeah, and, I, you know, we don't know how they're going to play. I don't know how they're going to play Alabama. Uh, I think uh, Coker has got a remarkable arm. He's making good decisions. He's he's can if you talk about a guy who's who has a, has ability 
but didn't have the whole thing put together right. Mm -hmm. Okay, from the beginning of the season to now, you can just, it's, it's been nice to watch the development of him, but it means a lot to him. You know, that, that's what won him, to the, uh, won him over to his teammates. And they, they can just tell how much winning means to him. And he, he is just reveling in this position he has. Now, if uh, I have confidence in him. You know, he's got an arm and he, makes, he, he can put it there. But uh, I still got to feel like that uh, they're going to be concerned about that. And I think Henry should have a pretty good day. Uh, Coach Saban, un unless it's bowl games, postseason games, the assistant coaches, they don't say anything. They don't get to say anything. But in, in the bowl season, they get to talk a little bit, and you, you see some stories coming out from time to time and interviews coming out from time to time during the postseason. And, and they talk about how meticulous Saban is with everything, even the headsets in the games. Yeah, he, you know, he has... They have very uh, a tremendous organization. Uh, we were talking recently a bunch of guys about uh, the size of staffs. You know, I think that it came with him from the NFL. But you know, the the quote football analysts, they call offensive analysts, defense, they hire a lot of people to do a lot of things to make sure everything is taken care of. Uh, and and you're right, he's very much attention to detail. And uh, finally, this morning, there as there is every year. Uh, with the success of Alabama uh, and the instability in the NFL of teams talking, uh, media talking about uh, Saban, hey, he's done all he's done in Alabama, and he's got the itch to go back to the NFL. But the guy's pretty entrenched, yeah. not only in Alabama, but in state business. His family is here, and his, his mom's just moved here as well. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, you're always going to have that uh, at least for a while longer, people trying to get him to the NFL. And, uh, you know, and I, I believe him. I don't think he wants to leave. I mean, he may be intrigued by it, uh, you know, but his life's here. You know, not only the football team that he helped bring back or, or responsible for bringing it back, but his grandchild's here, he, like his whole family here. He likes it here. Uh, and he's 64 years old, and, and he's not really looking to make a big move, I don't think. Is Alabama the top program in college football? I don't know one that can beat it. I don't know one. I don't know one that right now would say that's better than they are. Uh, you know, when you say top pro, that means that uh, that would mean that you're never going to lose a game. <clears throat> but if you lose a game, you got the pieces in place to figure it out and come back so that it doesn't uh, start to be a downward spiral. Spiral, at least not at this point. You know. Finally, Steve Spravey, our, our guest this morning, National Championship 73 Alabama team. Bama getting set for uh, the championship game on Monday night against Clemson. And uh, you ever think back, Steve, about when you played and today's teams sure. of, of the amenities of, of how uh, – did you guys go on buses? Did you fly or uh, well, some changes? Uh, there are a lot of changes. I, you know, you hadn't brought this up. You didn't bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up since we're talking about differences. You know, the, the size of players. You know, we talk about, you know, you didn't have a 225 to 30-pound offensive lineman in that time. How you much know, did you weigh? Uh, you know, go, I, I could weigh much like I did now, 225 at times. But – there again, it was so hard keeping weight up because we practiced a long time. And, you know, I've gone into games 218, you know, 220, you know, stuff like that. You know. A tackle? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, but we ran the wishbone. And John Hanna was the largest offensive lineman we had. And he would be, you know, in his Alabama playing weight was probably smaller than any of them in Alabama now. You know, uh, even a guy who weighed 240 pounds, which we had some of those, Certainly would be not even in the in the ballpark, uh, but but as far as you know, we were treated well. Coach Bryant probably you know the start of the the Bryant had Bryant Hall. We lived together, which was different than it is today. And, and there's a lot of big differences on that realm. Uh, was that know, good? Oh, it was great. It was great. You know, we watched film together. We studied together. We did a lot of things together. Uh, you know it. A lot of great stories, a lot of great stories. Uh, but we traveled first class. Everything about the program at that time was as first class as you could, mm -hmm. as it could be. I mean, it, there was a time that it kind of set the standard. But the standard 
is elevated. You know, the standard changes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, weight rooms are unbelievable compared to what we had. And the, the intensity and the uh, de devotion and the uh, stress, importance of weight training is, is a big part of today, much more so than it was with us. Story about a favorite teammate before we let you go. Well, I'm gonna mention Randy, uh, since he's deceased in high school state championship, SEC championships, uh, national championship. So, he's a great one. Yeah. Steve Sprayberry, our guest this morning on Daybreak, and Happy New Year to you, sir. Happy New Year to you. And uh, Steve, Thank very you. successful businessman here in Silicon. And he's got to get to his group meeting. He hosts about 150 <laughs> men who are of various persuasions, intelligent, and all this kind of stuff. And they <laughs> conquer the world's problems and well, let him get to and, that. And we like Jimmy to come speak to us every now and then after he gets on that. There you go. <laughs>